What's up disc golfers? It looks like I'm live and everything is going just zippity dandy wandy doo luda. Whatever Facebook, I don't care about what you have to say because you're a horrible evil corporation and your streaming service kind of sucks, but there are a lot of people on Facebook. So <laughs> let me tell you how I really feel. Okay, so this is outside of what I normally talk about here. And uh, I, this is a disc golf channel talking about disc golf things, generally speaking. You go to Half in the Bag and we talk about beer and probably some disc golf and then some beer and then the stupid whatever we did. Half in the Bag, great times. You should follow that. What are you? Seriously, YouTube, why are you freaking out? Whatever. I am just, I'm over this. I'm recording it. So if it all goes to hell in a handbasket, I have got a recording here because I did remember to hit record before things started. But um, let's, let's, uh, let's roll the intro here first. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Joe's Disc Golf Podcast streaming to you live on the Disc Joe's Disc Golf Podcast Network. Still trying to get that one right. You know, with two podcasts, we are now a network. And that is what constitutes a network, I guess. I don't know. It is what it is, man. It is what it is. But, uh, so I want to thank, before I forget, because I have a tendency to forget things, I want to thank the lovely, the fantastic, the beautiful, gorgeous, handy, dandy, super duper, Really great, awesome Reaper discs right here. They send you really cool stickers when you order stuff. Really, really cool stickers. Uh, Reaper discs, reaperdiscs.com. They have so many things in stock, so many crazy things. I got this week, I think I got two emails of them saying what they got restocked, and it is too much for me to really uh, go into here, but they have everything from Discraft to Disc Mania, Dynamic Disc, Latitude, West Side. MVP, Axiom, Innova, Tour Series, regular discs. You pick the color, you pick the color of the stamp, you pick the weight, and they send it to you. $4.95 flat rate shipping here in the US of A. Sorry, all of you international disc golfers, but it's going to cost you more, probably in Canada, probably in Mexico. I don't know how that works. I'm not from there. I haven't lived there. I don't order things to there. The last time I ordered something that was technically by a Canadian company, Linus Tech Tips, um, I got my water bottle and a desk mat, but they have partnered with the warehouse or something in the U.S. I don't know. As far as I know, I didn't pay any extra like import fees, I guess. I don't know. Or they lump it in. I don't know how all that works because I don't do international stuff. Yay! Welcome up the disc golf photograph guy and Killer Cruz. Uh, thoughts on the Gyropalooza packs? I don't have thoughts. They hurt my brain. Um, I don't. Uh, I'm guessing you're talking about like the last year they did like the Gyropalooza, or maybe it was earlier this year. Let me side trip. Let, let me finish. Reaper discs. They are awesome. <laughs> They send you also a handwritten note. They send you your discs. They're awesome. Uh, last time I was on their website, which was a couple days ago, they were still doing a giveaway for a Meta Tilt. So you enter your email and boom goes the dynamite. You are entered in to win a Meta Tilt and they are not cheap. Let me tell you, I had to buy one. That is the single most expensive disc in my bag. Um, the Gyropalooza, if I remember correctly, those are like the mystery boxes, I believe. I am on the fence about about mystery boxes um i i delineate them a little bit from loot boxes like i i am i hate loot boxes i think they're the dumbest thing in video games yet they keep getting money it is gambling it is 110 percent gambling um mystery boxes it's harder because you actually get something physical and whether or not that's that's a great distinction, it's, you know, outside of my, uh, I don't know how to put words to it. You know, the guy who talks on a disc golf podcast can't figure out the words to say, go figure. Um, but with that, I just, with some of those, it's kind of like, 
generally they what they charge you is at least that value in plastic so you can theoretically just flip all that stuff online give it to other people um they did come with the blue glow inertia. Yeah, I heard that one was like selling like hotcakes. Like everybody wanted that one. I don't throw much MVP. I picked up a couple. Um, I couldn't even tell you what I picked up. They were overstable distance drivers. I liked them, but one of them was too close to my stiletto that I that I actually bag here. I had to lean over and get it. Uh, in On half in the bag this past week, we did the other half of the in the bag, and I still have my stiletto here. It was too close to my stiletto, and I, I like the stiletto. And, you know, if I lose this stiletto, then yes, I will probably end up bagging that. And then there was something else that was a step down that was pretty close to my Lucidex Chameleon Page Shoe Sheriff. Yeah, that's a mouthful to say right there. Um, it was just, again, too close to that. But again, if I lose that, which I bought because I knew it was a limited run, I bought two of those just in case I lose it. It breaks in too fast or whatever. And, you know, I uh, I think that, um, uh, yeah, I just like some of those discs were cool. And I, I for me, I guess it's it's different just because, like I said before, you get something physical, you get something tangible, something you can sell. Loot boxes for insert whatever game, whether it's uh, Fortnite, FIFA, Call of Duty, I don't care. I it you know those are Fortnite's a little different, I guess, because it's been going so far and so long, and it doesn't look like it's stopping anytime soon. But Call of Duty, you buy a loot box, you get the skin for your gun. And then next year, there's the next Call of Duty game, whatever that is, and then so on and so forth. Um, just, yeah, I don't know. Uh, the only Tesla that I've had and thrown was way back when that was the disc you got from the PDGA for signing up. So if... Uh, <laughs> thank you, YouTube. Uh, currently... I am talking to no one in chat, even though you're currently responding to me. I love the analytics on YouTube. They're fantastic. They do such a good job. Um, sorry, uh, a little behind the scenes there. Uh, uh, I forgot what I was going to say, but they like all that stuff kind of disappears. Um, oh, the Tesla. And um, it was it's like a 150 something gram that I had and I hated it because even back when I first became a PDGA member in 2017, question mark, I did it for a year or two, and then I didn't, and then I just renewed for 2021, uh, 2020, 2021, and now for 22. So, um, but I didn't like it because it just flipped way too fast, um, and I didn't know as much that of what it would I didn't know what the numbers meant. I bought a boss because I was like, oh, that's cool. Oh, this is fun. I can throw that pretty good. Um, you know, and I bought stupid crap. Like I originally bought the stiletto because I thought I needed crazy overstable stuff to throw. And I'm a forehand player, so I do need something a little more stable, but not exactly that crazy overstable. Um, unpopular opinion... Innova won't be the first to limit tour series because it makes their elite level more elite. Um, yes. Uh, I think they are the first to limit it. I think what you meant was they won't be the only ones to limit the tour series. Um, yes. I. It's hard right now because it just seems like they're not supporting their lower level level lip. Words are hard. They're not supporting their, like, obviously their elite team. I forget what they call it. Is it the elite team? Um, whatever their top team is. Everybody has a different name for their top team. Is it the flight team? Um, but for champion and star, I, if I, and I'm not as familiar with their structure, I, I'm going to guess champion is the middle and then star is the next one down. Star is the one, like, either way. So level one, level two, level three. Boom. Every, every team, every manufacturer has something along those lines. Level one, two, three. Level one is your top. Level two is that almost top. Level three is, eh, you know, your, you know, what you would probably have originally signed, say, Ganon Burr or um, 
a few other guys like that. Uh, Gannonburg is only the only reason I think of him is like a 16 year old, someone who's really young, who, you know, maybe uh, probably has uh, isn't going to be as good as Gannon Burr. Uh, just someone who's like, all right, you are pretty good. We want to get you in the Innova family or the Discraft, Discmania in, into the family and want to get you to stay here. So we're going to throw you in on the bottom team, give you some stuff and then just go from there. Um, I think there should be, because the elite team is so, generally they're all so small that they, sh I think they really need to, st to support that tier two. And depending on how the companies all break it down, maybe, you know, Discmania has what three people on the top on the guys, or is that total? I can't remember because it's uh, Simon Eagle, Kyle Klein. I can't remember if there's any women on that as well. I'm blanking off the top of my head. Um, Cause I don't, I don't know all the team. Like I know roughly who's on what team. I don't know who's on what level. I think level, the level two team members should have some access to tour series to help them keep going because they're, if they're good enough to be at that level two, they're probably going to end up, you know, getting up there, getting up towards the top, getting your top 10 finishes at the least on the women's side, probably top five. Although that field is getting a lot deeper and a lot more exciting to watch. Um, I've actually been thoroughly enjoying the FPO coverage, partly because that's when it, when they tee off is when I can watch it. Um, but it's also been really good too. Yeah. And I think, I think the problem is right now what they're caught in. What what prompted this was the post that I saw from Maria Oliva's uh, dad, someone. It wasn't her who posted it, but it's who was posting on her behalf said that they don't have. She has a few roadrunners left with her stamp on it. Um, I. It's just kind of frustrating, um, especially if they give them, from what I understand, they give them an allowance to get discs. What. What's the harm in using that to get stamps and then sell them? That's kind of where I'm at to help them stay out there. Because as of right now, and this is, I'm not just picking on Innova, but like, look at most of the, most of the touring pros out there. They're not, they're not making a great living from disc golf, from winning or from the sponsorship side. Like they'll, they'll get enough money to go out and tour, but that's part of the reason why they have, you'll see, you know, they're sponsored by Innova and whale sacks and um i don't know squatch bags I'm, I'm pulling out sponsors i could think of off the top of my head but you know they have eight thousand sponsors to help them out to be able to tour not everybody is ricky or paul or Paige or kona or Kristen that are getting you know hundreds of thousands million dollars a year and being able to go like yeah whatever if i get you know ricky had a slow start you know whatever i get you know, 12, get 12th place, whoop de doo But I don't, I think they need to find some way to help support those, those um, up and coming disc golfers that they have signed to a decently high level. That's, that's, I think where I'm at. Uh, the disc golf photograph guy says they have to focus on the top pros for the future of disc golf to grow, but maybe maintain some low level cause, uh, low levels because the sport doesn't necessarily need them to help grow like the past has been it, that that is a good point um i struggle with reading apparently uh, uh oh man uh if you caught my video uh that i released earlier today uh that was kind of a cartoon video that i put out and you have no idea how many takes that took. And still, the voice work has a lot to be desired because yours truly is not a voice actor. And my wife texted me. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Oh, yeah. Um, but she reminded me to make sure I turn on the alarm before I go to bed. Don't want those creepers to break into our house. Uh, I lost my train of thought, but yeah. Oh yeah. For growing the sport. Um, I think I mentioned this in a comment on my video. Uh, I was going back with Heiser Ponick's disc golf. Uh, we were talking about, he was talking about, you know, Eagle essentially being dumb when he originally hurt his shoulder back in October. And I will say I did plenty of stupid things too. Um, and we started talking a little bit back and forth. I said, well, he's not 
he's probably one of the more high profile athletes in disc golf right now. And disc golf is kind of in this weird spot where we're not like a rec or amateur sport, but we're not a quote real sport yet. And when I say real sport, I mean like even like professional bowling, like, uh, like that kind of stuff where there are, or, you know, golf where there's the tour card, and there's benefits with that. I, I don't know which way it should go, whether it is the, uh, disc golf pro tour that should offer some sort of, um, on call, you know, um, uh, not contractor consultant where, you know, the players can call them up and say, Hey, this is what's going on. You know, I also advocated for like an athletic trainer to show up maybe just for the first day, maybe during one or two practice rounds where they can get hands on with the athletes and go, all right, you know, my shoulders bugging me. And, you know, maybe it's just an overuse thing or my knee or my back or my this or my that. Someone who has orthopedic experience, orthopedic knowledge who can go, no, you should be fine. Do these stretches. No, this is worth getting looked at. Hey, you should probably take this weekend off. You know, that's not what any athlete ever wants to hear. Trust me, I do that for a living. And reasoning with a high schooler is like uh, trying to herd cats. But you know, something like that, whether that is, like I said, a benefit of having a tour card, or if that's a benefit of the manufacturer sponsor, because again, we're in a weird spot where, you know, we're not quite like, you know, where say like the golf pros, you know, the touring PGA members, they can with their winnings and everything else, they and their sponsorships, they can afford to go get whatever they can bring a massage therapist with them and do whatever. Uh, but you know, it's not necessarily Nike that hit my microphone. It's not Nike paying for that person. It's not, uh, Wilson paying for that person. It's, you know, I guess indirectly because I cut a check to tiger or to Phil or to whoever, whatever person, if that makes sense. Um, uh, uh, the disc golf, uh, Photography guy says disc golf is well on their way there now. So the future athletes need to see that they can make a good living in disc golf instead of climbing on some proverbial ladder just to make a living. Uh, it has to appeal to true athletes. Yep. And I, and we're, we're on our way there. It's we're in that, like I said, we're in a weird spot right now where purses are starting to grow, but you can't necessarily count on making a living in like from tournament winnings or however, you know, making the cash line, you know, bottom cash is usually like $150, $200. And that's not great. I'm not saying you have to make a living off of, you know, that necessarily, but like, you know, the higher level guys where they're winning and that actually helps out or, you know, getting other bigger sponsors in because, you know, you know, if, Nike just whips it out and flops it on the table. They'll be like a million dollars. Yeah, sure. (laughs) Yeah, whatever you want to, we can give you 2 million. That's easy. Where even Innova, who's the largest manufacturer out there right now is kind of like, I don't, I don't know about that. You know, there's probably something else going on behind the scenes with them. Um, You know, they see something it's, it's going to be interesting in the next couple of years after the big contract signings that we've had this year and last year between, you know, and year before, I guess, between Macbeth and Wysocki and um, Dickerson had to get a good paycheck. He didn't make it public, but it sounds like he got a good paycheck. And then on the women's side, we don't know pages numbers. They're private, but I think it's safe to say that she's probably the highest paid female disc offer. If not from just the public numbers, you've got Kona and Kristen who are tied for the highest paid female disc golf disc golfer that we know of just straight up contract. And that is eventually going to become the baseline. Once, once, like I said, Nike or Adidas or Under Armour, someone sees like there's enough eyeballs on here where we'll be able to make that money back. It's just right now, you know, I don't know. I don't know what, what the right answer is for that. I think as the way it's going now, the disc golf pro tour is also kind of becoming like a player's association. Uh, uh, and so that, you know, might not be a bad thing there. It's just a weird spot, but, um, 
going to interrupt this disc golf podcast to talk about what I was going to start with, which is not disc golf related. Uh, the trailer and everything has dropped for the new Fairly Odd Parents show. And dear Lord, Mr. Crocker looks terrible. Like that looks really terrible. That looks so bad. I just happened to hop on Twitter and see that. Um, and I had I had to comment on it. It's really, really weird. Um, but it's just, yeah, God, that is so weird. Like I'm looking at some of this and it is just, it is mildly disturbing. So if you go ahead and hop on Twitter, you can go and see that. But, uh, yeah, I just, I just had to let you guys know, share the pain. That's what we're all about here in Joe's disc golf. Share the pain. Um, moving back to disc golf here. Uh, Andrew says, how big do you think disc golf will get in direct comparison to ball golf? Salary, contract benefits, spectator views, outside sponsors to make new courses. How long do you think it'll take to get there? And what will it take to get there? I think we're still a ways away from that. Um, how long? I don't know. Because you got to look at it this way. Golf has been around for 100 years, probably longer. Um, you got to look, what was it? The It was in the 50s or 60s when golf really started taking off here. Um, and that was, you know, after you know, there are a couple world wars that kind of screwed things up there where you didn't really have the growth of the sport there. But I, I would say, I mean, we saw, it's hard to tell a little bit right now with how much we've grown, like COVID, we just, that was a straight line up that went straight up. How much of that is going to stay and what is our growth rate? now like pdga memberships went way up you know disc golf memberships went way up u disc usage went way 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 up how much of that is going to stay and where are we at because right now we're kind of in a leveling off period it's going to be years before we get there um same thing like i we're, we're both golf but we're still so far away from everything we're still we still need to get more Eagles crossings, more Maple Hills, more Smuggler's Notches, where it is a, and maybe not Smuggler's Notch, but uh, in the sense that, uh, how about I cut, how about I stop cutting myself off from making my own points? Wow, I am such a jerk. Um, where it is a single use facility, where it is, this is a disc golf course, not a disc golf course and a public park and the softball fields and the baseball fields and the walking trails and all that stuff. There is one of my favorite courses to play here is in the uh, a neighborhood that's not so great, but it's getting better. So uh, they let us put a disc golf in, course in there because there's no one that uses this park and only... One fairway runs close-ish if you have a really bad throw. If you have a really, really bad throw, I've done it. But you can end up in the tennis courts. Um, that's on hole one. On hole two, you can end up left into the outfield of some softball fields. But after that, it is almost exclusively just a disc golf course. And even still then, we get people who decide that, hey, these are some cool trails. And they don't know any better, which, I mean, disc golf is still growing. And I've definitely almost hit some people. Um, card mates have almost hit people just because they're walking the hole backwards. And there are a lot of dog legs out there and it is very wooded course. It's no, you know, it's no um, um, dogwood. It's no uh, Northwoods black, but it is dense enough woods where you can't, you go around the corner, you can't see. And even like in a tournament, I'll, a lot of times I'm the guy who parks my cart at the corner because the holes are 375, 380, easy enough where, you know, you could be around the corner and still get hit. You know, you could, you know, some of the corners are 200 feet and then it's a 90 degree turn to the left and then it's another 200 feet or so. Um, so I think we need that. We need some more courses that are just disc golf only. We also need more beginner friendly courses. Uh, where I'm at, there are, there's only one course that I would consider beginner friendly. And it's the most beginner friendly that's here. The average hole length is something like, my watch is yelling at me to move. The average hole length is something like 
three over 300 feet. If you play the red layout, a lot of the holes are very long. If you don't include the woods, and I would not include the woods because there's only there's six optional letter holes in the woods that are 200 to 275 fairways that are eight feet wide. So not, not beginner friendly and you get off and you're not, you're not going to be good. So we need more courses that are putt and approach courses where you can take your kids. You could take someone who's new and the holes are 200, 250. Maybe you get one hole that's 300 feet. That's, you know, that that's that hard hole when you're just starting out where someone who's experienced like myself, or probably a lot of you listening out there, you can go and do a putter only round and work on breaking down a hole and work on aspects of your game. Or, you know, you could take a juniors player, you could take your kid out there and teach them and they can get a birdie. They can learn to get a birdie early and really get bit by the bug. The courses that I'm looking at, like our shorter courses, there's a lot of water. There are some holes that you could play just fine, no water, but there's a lot of danger. And the last thing you want to do is get that starter set out there take your mid and just chuck it in the water. We have a couple peninsula holes, a couple holes where it's the basket 20 feet to a creek. Well, depending on what time of year and how much rain we've had, it is anywhere from 25 feet to the creek, or it could be like 10 feet to the creek. <laughs> it depends on what time of year. Um, those are those are things. Um, so the disc golf foot. Uh, photographer. I want to keep saying you photographer guy. It's photography guy. Uh, when we put uh, Splinter City here in Myrtle Beach, it blew up and we've seen so many new people. Uh, tags have reached 200 plus. Wow, that's awesome. Uh, when before it was like 100. Yeah, we're just starting to flirt with about 200 at the Fort Disc Golf Club. Um, Andrew says to get disc golf to the next level, I feel like disc manufacturers should put more focus and energy in getting disc golf into high schools and universities. What are my thoughts? Uh, disc golf photographer says, I agree on the short courses for sure. Let the park kids have a place to play on. Yeah, oh, oh and the last thing you wanna do is go to a park and accidentally hit someone, whether that is a, a kid or a parent. One of the courses, the easy course to play on, there are a couple shots where you throw semi-blind, there's a couple hills. They're not big hills, but people like to post up because it's in the shade, it's a little slanted, they can see their kids at the park, and you can't see them from the tee. Again, I've almost hit a few people. They put some mandos in, but um, as they said on, is it the upshot on Ulti World? Mandos are really only enforced during tournaments. I mean, yes, they're there. And a lot of the guys I play with, we want to play the course because a lot of times, obviously the courses around there that around here are used for tournaments. So why would I practice a shot that I can't do in a tournament? That's just not fun. Uh, they put up a Mando recently that turned one hole from like the easiest 250 foot uphill shot, Heiser, to it has to go dead straight down a corridor because it, the hole was too easy and it also kind of put the next hole in danger because if you flip that hyzer over you're shooting right at the tees um we do need to get disc golf more into the high schools and grade schools to be honest um the high school i work at so um i'm as i've probably mentioned before and i'll probably mention a bunch of other times i am a high school athletic trainer so i do sports medicine at a high school uh, I get there early enough where I have uh, gained a relationship with the uh, gym teachers who are also coaches, you know, no stereotypes there. Um, but we also have a few other coaches that are like biology teachers and all that, but I digress. Um, what they do, uh, they do have a disc golf um, segment in their, in their uh, education where the coaches put out hula hoops on the football field and you start at one spot and you throw, and they actually have disc golf discs. They're the um, uh, Millennium brand, and they're like super cheap, super basic, but you don't need, there's, there's no trees. These kids don't know how to throw. So I was out on the football field uh, before work one day, just ripping them, just working on technique and stuff, um, just trying to get things, work on the power pocket, you know, all that stuff. Um, and they saw me throw and they're like, hey, can you teach? So I did a little quick basic thing of like 
This is how you do a standstill. You want your feet apart. You want your foot like this, front foot like this, back foot like this. And you want to just pull straight across your chest. You, that's it. They thought it was the most fun. And then the coach is like, or the, the gym teacher is like, hey, why don't you throw a few? So I, you know, threw a few backhands. They're like, wow, that's so far. And I'm throwing it like 300 going, that was a crap throw. They're like, can you like, can you do that again? So then I throw a forehand and just like being a forehand dominant player, I, I ended up ripping that like 375, 380. I went from goalpost to past the other goalpost and goalpost to goalpost on a football field is, should be, <laughs> if they built it right, should be 360 feet roughly. So, you know, one, one to the other. And that was, that was so much fun. And I know I got a couple of kids interested in that. I'm trying to figure out how to talk to the administration to put in a couple permanent baskets. Um, they have some land uh, where cross country runs around and they can put it, it's mostly open. You could probably get, I, I haven't actually, I don't know what, where their land ends and where the property next door starts. So you could easily, with the land I'm thinking of and going to propose, you could probably get three to six holes in where, again, it would be like the shorter courses. This is a smaller town. So this would be like, you know, a couple 200 ish feet holes, 250, somewhere in there where they can, like I said, get a birdie early and then just throw one in there that's a bit longer. That one that's like, ah, oh, I can get it next time. I can try to get it next time kind of thing and get that out there. Um, the uh, Myrtle Beach Open was filmed by the Splinter City, uh, filmed at Splinter City at uh, CCDG. Sweet. That's all. Is it up now? Um because that's pretty sweet. Uh, they, they, um, the Three Rivers Open, which is this year is going to be the 38th year of the Three Rivers Open. Uh, last year, uh, they had a, a new company come up and uh, videotape lead card all three days. Well, feature card and then lead card all three days. Um, they're based out of Evansville. Uh, they just, I actually had... Uh, somebody from the club asking if they could borrow my setup to record the audio. And unfortunately, well, at the time, I only had one microphone and my setup is really made for just one person unless you want to sit in someone's lap and then you could commentate. Although that could get, I could get real awkward real quick. Um, there's a joke in there somewhere that I don't want to make on this podcast. Oh, man. It's okay. I went to a mostly theater school for my sports medicine degree. And you see a lot of interesting things when your school is known for being musical theater. A lot of great people, a lot of fun people. But uh, yeah. Um, nice. Oh, I think I saw that. Uh, it was, was that one of the years where it was like Philo and Yuli? And like that was, I think I remember seeing that. Philo is a fun dude. Nice, you filmed the FPO. Who was there? Who was with the uh, Who was with the FPO? I don't know that one. Off like, there's so many tournaments that are starting to get filmed that it's it's starting to get hard to keep up, and it's awesome. Um, yeah, I appreciate the answers to those questions. I have subbed. Thanks for the effort and the content. I'm looking to make my own disc golf channel. Seeing your relaxed live is motivating. Oh, uh, let me tell you, it was, I've been, this is a year. I started these December, 2020. That's why the Joe's disc golf logo says established 2020, just barely. That's not on there, but I feel like I should put that on there. Established 2020, just barely. Um, but it, it took me a while to get comfortable on camera. Um, it took me a while to get prepared too. Um, oh, that must've been so fun. I, you know, I'm about three hours from, um, I'm about three hours from, uh, uh, toboggan and I've yet to play or watch. Uh, I tried to get a media pass for toboggan and I could not get it, but that's okay. Uh, I still want to go out there and have fun if I can still get a ticket. I don't know who's going to be at, uh, Deglo this year, just because that's like the week after the European open. So I don't think it's going to be like, I don't, I don't think Paul or Ricky, Paige, um, Kat will be there, but it'll still be fun. And at that one, it was uh, 
Cat and Holly. That must have been fun. Um, yeah, she is. Uh, uh, Holly Finley is someone that I don't know. Watching her play is fun. I found her on Instagram and watching her her throw. It's just it's entertaining. She does a good job. Like she's she is a very solid player. Um, and Andrew, good luck with the uh, the competitor disc golf channel. Um, but it's, it's a ton of fun. It's a lot of work. You have to love it. Uh, there are days where you will not enjoy it. Um, not saying you won't love it overall, but there are days where it is not fun. Um, to say the least, I listen to five different podcasts all about disc golf. Plus I listen to two general news because I want to know how the world's burning this year uh, or today, I should say. Um, she also, um, go <laughs> bouncing between topics here. Um, uh, the disc golf photography, photography guy says that, um, Ali is really nice too. She comes across that way. Like you could tell, not saying that other people don't, but like on social media, when they, when you post a video, you can kind of tell if someone's being genuine or if someone's being fake nice, if that makes sense. Um, another thing, uh, Andrew, is you don't be surprised if you're talking to the ether. It is, it is going to happen. You will be, it'll be a long time. Honestly, this is the most people that I've ever had talking at one time uh, um, on YouTube. Twitch, one time I had six or seven different people talking and then I killed all the momentum when my daughter was born and I didn't put anything out for like three months. So if you're also planning on having a child, that could throw a wrench into things. I love my daughter, don't get me wrong, but kids are a lot of work. Running a YouTube channel is a lot of work. Work is a lot of work. And then you have to sleep at some point too. Um, it, it takes a long time. I got super lucky last summer where I ended up having two videos go viral for disc golf. So when I say viral, I mean one currently sits at uh, 20,000 views and another has 15,000 views. So when I say they went viral for disc golf, they went viral for just disc golf. This did not make it outside. And that's, that was with all the stuff that happened at worlds last year. And then the stuff that went down with Paige and the lovely PDGA president that was on his way out last year, just had some real contempt for the, for a lot of the players and had a lot of contempt uh for disc golf it seemed and being the pdga it was not it was not cool um to say the least but yes you will have fun talking to the ether and you never know when something's going to take off i just was talking did my video it was like 10 minutes and then that was it i mean you're going to sit for a long time with no views um i would also recommend adding in social media um, there's also a Facebook page. I have a Twitter account and an Instagram account, and I don't do a great job at social media. I'm trying to get better with, um, I'm, d I'm getting better with Twitter. I tried to make the new year's resolution to post every single day on Instagram. I have stopped that because I ended up for lack of a better way of putting it shit posting. And it was like, I was putting out a lot of stuff, but it wasn't good stuff. And I'm not saying that everything has to be the super curated, immaculate everything, but it was just like, oh no, I have to post today. Uh, here's a picture of a disc. L let me write something quick. You know, that's not going to end up being good. So, um, uh, I made it on a commercial on ESPN coverage for DDO. Nice. That's awesome. Um, I don't have cable, so I unfortunately didn't see it. Um, thank you. That actually means a lot. Uh, uh, the disc golf photography guy says, Joe, you do a great job keeping up uh, consistently. I know how hard it is. It is. It's super hard. Um, and it is rather difficult to, to stay motivated when you have nothing, <laughs> to say the least. Um, 
Great advice. Uh, if you decide to start uploading again, I wish you the best of luck. I will be back in the live comments with an update in the future. Cool. That's awesome. Oh, you didn't know either. <laughs> Even better. Oh, nice. I'm sure if it was, you know, if you were in the shot from Worlds, you'd, I would be absolutely sick of it because, you know, it's a great shot. Don't get me wrong. And I, I've talked about this before, but the Holy Shot has been wholly played way too much um, because MVP plays it because why would you not? That is your player who threw it in with your disc, like first year he assigned, and then Disc Golf Pro Tour is playing it. But over under on how many times you see that per stream, and I'm counting MPO, FPO, I know they're separate streams now, but per day, per round, I would be shocked if you see it less than 10 times. You know, I would say 30 to 40 times per tournament you're seeing that ad and it's just annoying hopefully we'll find some more great shots and be able to mix it up a little bit but uh, mvp is probably also loving all the free ads because you know everybody's using it um i i guess i'll also probably get into my next topic kind of twisting, turning, winding, and grinding here, starting out with the Maria Oliva stuff. Um, Paige Pierce broke the news that the, the Disc Golf Pro Tour is looking into standardizing baskets, uh, whether that is making their own or getting bids. A typo there. Uh, many players complaining about having different baskets from tournament to tournament or even during different rounds of the same tournament. And I totally get that. Um... To a certain extent, I guess I'm not, you know, it's one of those things like uh, I, I play golf five times a year and I have my $130 Wilson set from Walmart and I'm perfectly content with using that. And my brother-in-law will make fun of me on occasion because he actually golfs. He played golf in high school. He's from California where it was warm and sunny and he can play outside all year round without needing to put on, you know, hats and gloves and all that stuff. And, you know, one of his, his putter is worth more than my bag, including all the balls that I have in there. Uh, so, you know, I'm not good enough to know the difference between hitting my driver that costs $30 probably versus his driver that costs $300. I'm assuming, I'm guessing roughly. So I not, I don't think I'm good enough. I know each basket has a different sweet spot where some of the putts, like if I'm putting on a veteran, I know that I need to hit, you know, just left of the pole and I'll be good. Where if I try to do the same thing on, we have some old mock baskets on some of our courses. Like we have old mock threes that were top of the line when they were put in. That's how old some of our courses are. And they hold up. They're great. Don't get me wrong. I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to make fun of DGA or mock baskets. The mock threes are fine, but they're not, they're, they're not the championship level veterans that we have on some of the newer courses. Or I think one of the courses has the uh, MVP black hole, the top one. I think that's what it's called. And each one has a slightly different, like if you end up hitting high right with a hyzer on, uh, I think it's the mock, you're gonna, you're probably gonna pass right through. And if you do that with a veteran, you're probably gonna stay. Like you don't wanna hit that spot. That's not a good spot to hit, but you'll probably stay. Um, and each spot has a little bit different basket. I've had so many spit outs from just going straight at it, hitting pole and just going straight back where, you know, some of the other ones, it's not so much. Like each basket's a little different and I can understand knowing like, all right, I can buy the Disc Golf Pro Tour basket and practice as a pro, practice. And I know exactly, like, if I hit this spot, we're good. If I hit this spot, we're good. If I hit this spot, it's a toss-up. Um, I can understand that. Now, I think right now the Disc Golf Pro Tour is missing out on some moolah saying that they should, I think they should put out bids and go, all right, you know, Discraft, uh, I think Discraft makes baskets. Um, Discraft, DGA, Innova, um, Latitude, uh, Dynamic Discs, anybody else, you know, hey, put in your bids and sell, you know, sell that space. And then, you know, you could always do instead of because I'm sure people aren't going to be happy about like, you know, 
um, dynamic dis is not going to be happy happy if the DDO if they have to swap out all their baskets for Innova baskets or Vegas has to swap it out for the latitude baskets or whatever, you know, you get my point, but you make them, you know, you say that, you know, the official basket of the disc golf pro tour is the dynamic disc veteran, but the band on the top is ads. There's, there's nothing that indicates that it's a veteran. It's just like, you know, here's an ad for whale sack. Here's an ad for foundation disc golf. Here's an ad for whatever. So then you're also getting more money for selling the ads from the band. Um, I do think the, I see, and I'm, I'm up in the air on this one about the, uh, uh, the new garbage cans, I guess, for lack of a better way to put it, that are at the bottom of the disc golf baskets. I don't know if I like those more or less than the um, pads, but they're certainly more readable. Like I, they're legible. That's the word. Me talk. Good. I am behind on chat. I'm not used to chat, so you guys will have to bear with me here. Uh, so side topic, I realized today that I putt the best with the Berg. I have all types of putters from the Judge to the AVR Pure, Luna, and more, but for some reason, I can't throw any of them as easily as the Berg. Um, I've been getting a lot of flack on my recent videos. Oh, I think I feel like I missed something here. Um, yeah. And, uh, live in Utah and the fort is only an hour away. Oh, that's cool. Uh, when I play, I can vividly imagine Conrad throwing the crowd's reaction when See, that, I, I would like to get out and play more of these courses. And I, um, as I said in those videos, some of the complaints that were voiced by the players that I amplified, apparently, um, I wasn't blaming the guys running the tournament. It really seemed like the PDGA was like last minute going in and just doing things. So I think it was a good idea that the PDGA basically ceded control of everything except the majors, which I'll give them. I think they can figure out how to run four pro tour or pro uh, majors, um, even though I don't know how much involvement they have with the European one. It, they three. Let's we'll say three. Um, but yeah, I don't blame any of those guys there. I don't think it's their fault that all of a sudden PDGA is like, hey, you have to do this, or just come in and they spray painted random lines. Um, find your channel for sure and leave a like and comment the algorithm for you yeah uh you're also going to be a slave to the algorithm uh whoever pays more will get their baskets up yeah it also sounded like in one of the quotes that i saw that uh the disc golf pro tour might be just also trying to develop and get their own basket approved which uh, again i see this as a lost opportunity you know um for a long time was it Wilson was the sponsor for basketball, the official basketball, and then they switched to Spalding? Or is it the other way around? Either way, you know, there's the official basketball of the NBA and the NCAA tournament and all that stuff. And I, I forget, they switched one way and the other. I don't remember. I don't follow basketball that close. But you could always do that, you know, five years, six years, seven years, whatever you want to make the contract. Something where it's long enough where it makes sense, like a one-year contract would be stupid. But where it's long enough and just go, all right, you know, we're going to pay you X amount of money and, you know, we're the official basket of that. Um, I think that'd be a cool idea. Uh, bought a quality starter set of golf clubs for $400. We're going to find out this summer which sport is harder between disc golf and ball golf. Um, shoot. Uh, see, and I, I struggled with both for two different reasons. So, yes, this... This podcast is definitely going to be a bit longer as a side note. So thank you all for listening. We're over 48 minutes in and it's going to seem a little disjointed because I'm going back and forth uh, talking with people. So if you want to join the conversation, you can always catch live 8.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, figure it out for the rest of the time zones. I used to live in Central, so it's 7.30, 6.30, 5.30, boom, did it for you. You can sit in that LA traffic. Um... As for which one is harder, I struggled with both for a lot of different reasons. So I have an ultimate Frisbee background. So I wanted to throw everything up because that's what you do. The what For an ultimate disc, that's what you have to do. Um, golf, I struggled a lot because I played baseball and I wanted to swing that club like a baseball bat and I still swing that club like a baseball bat. Um, I do think overall... 
golf is harder to be really good at where you could be pretty good at, at disc golf with just putters and and mids where you will not be good at golf um but you know that's i i like both and they're a lot of fun um i'm really terrible at golf i am i am the guy who's happy to be in the fairway and even happier to be in the fairway of the hole i'm playing that's where i'm at if you have ever watched the three stooges you just go look the divots are getting smaller i'm getting better they're getting smaller so there boom uh that's, that's kind of how I play golf. Uh, yeah, that's why I don't play the nice courses at all. Um, but uh, if you do, if if you want to watch some high quality golf videos, uh, I know he's on TikTok. I think I saw some stuff on um, YouTube. Uh, Man Manuela plays golf or teaches golf. And he is funny. He's a... Uh, He's Latin and he just, he just rapid fire jokes. Boom, 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 boom. My favorite video about how to get your hips into it. He just says, okay. And then you swing the club and then pee pee to the pin. You get your pee pee to the pin. He goes, it's not sex. It's just pee pee to the pin. And that's how you get your hips into it. And I was like, okay, all right. <laughs> that works out pretty good for disc golf too, to a certain extent. You really want to get your hips into it. So you want to, you know. When you, when you finish, you want your pee-pee to the pin. Oh, man, I'm probably going to get roasted for that. That's okay. I love it. That's the other thing, um, Andrew. Um, you want to make sure you have thick skin and just let the negative comments roll off, which is way easier said than done. Um, just... Uh, <laughs> Uh, yep. Uh, the actual difficult comparison goes to disc golf. Uh, more precise does not mean harder. Uh, is that the mistakes most people make are on the, yeah. I, I find golf harder. That's just, that's where I'm at. And I'll blame it on my baseball background for having a really crap swing. Um, disc golf I find easier, but I've always been kind of better with that kind of stuff. But, uh, yeah, that's a... Um, that's a good YouTube channel. Uh, I forget what I was saying here. That's okay. Uh, I was going to talk about the Music City Open. Oh, no, I'm going to, I'm going to talk about, uh, uh, Greg Barsby and Ricky Wysocki looking fantastic at Texas States. Ricky Wysocki coming back to win it. Uh, Paul Macbeth struggling a bit, but that course that will eat your lunch for sure. Uh, if you get off and, and that is, as I've said before, for myself in tournaments, I was a foot and a half off of shooting a hot round at, at a couple tournaments. And by a foot and a half, I mean over two rounds. Cause I play mostly C tiers and it's two rounds, same day. That's kind of the, it's kind of the deal there. Um, where, you know, a couple, I was out of, I was OB by two inches, a couple times. Like my disc was like two finger widths away from being technically in bounds, but I was OB, you know, I, you know, threw the disc, it got a little high and I squared up on that branch. But if I was three inches lower, I'm clear, you know, it's a game of inches. It's a simple game. You run, you throw, you bag them and you're good. You know, just kind of ad libbing there from uh, Bull Durham. It's a simple game. You throw the ball, you hit the ball, you catch the ball. But uh, it's um uh da, 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 da. yeah. So it just like it's it was one of those things, and then you know Paul just didn't do well for the second round. Shot the hot round twelve down, then he shot even, then a two down, I believe. And uh, let's see, I'd like to see Paul versus Brody disc golf round. Golf round, uh, lowest round wins. That'd be interesting. I don't know how much uh, golf uh, Macbeth plays. I know Brody talks about it all the time. He tried to tried to go pro in golf or was just a really good golfer. Um, and that's like saying basketball is easier because the ball is smaller. 
uh, or women's basketball is easier because the ball's smaller. Um, I'm so terrible at basketball. So any basketball is difficult for me. I I probably beat a fourth grader, maybe even a fifth grader before they hit puberty. I'd probably take them. Probably not. Those AAU kids are freaking insane. They're so good. Uh, but uh, back to the back to the Texas States. Ricky Waisaki looking good. Paige Pierce putting together an entire round. Um, I was kind of ragging on her a little bit, only because she wasn't playing up to her standards. It wasn't so much like she played well and Katrina played better or Kristen played better or something like that. It was that Paige didn't play well, relatively speaking. I don't know. Like I wish I wish having a bad round playing bad and I got second place or third place. I wish I could do that. Like I'm playing really good and happy with second place. And she's like playing bad and still doing well. Um, And uh, so, uh, yeah. So on the FPO side, it was great. I know some people were talking about uh, Barsby uh, designed the course, the thorn. Uh, He lives in Tyler, Texas now, which is a fantastic town. If you ever get a chance to go out to Tyler, Texas, you have to check out the jalapeno tree. Ah, such good Tex-Mex. I went there for grad school and and that was long enough ago where I don't know if that restaurant is around, whether or not there is, uh, whether or not COVID shut it down or not, I don't know. Um, but, uh, there's some discussion about like how, you know, well, he designed the course, so he knows the course really well. I don't think that plays a huge factor. Um, I mean, it plays a little bit. He kind of knows how the holes are supposed to be played. It doesn't mean that like, that could actually be a little bit of a detriment in my opinion, because you go in to a course and you don't know it. You're like, Oh yeah, there's a line over there. I could throw, I could throw just like that where he designed the course to be played X way. And you're finding Y line, which is fine. It's not breaking the course necessarily, but you know, it's a different way to play it. And the other thing is you still have to execute. Like one of the things that, that I, I thought of listening to the different arguments is like, yeah, Every single quarterback in the NFL knows what they're supposed to do when their receiver's running this route in this coverage. Not every quarterback knows how to execute that, so it, you know, is successful. Look at Jay Cutler. <laughs> I'm a Bears fan. I'm a glutton for punishment. Oh, uh, man. But it, it, you get what I'm saying. Like, you know, you understand. Like, just because you know what to do and actually executing what to do Two different things. So I don't, at this point in disc golf, I don't mind that course designers are the pros. And like, why would you not have a disc golf pro tour card carrying member who lives in your town design a course for the pro tour? It just seems, you know, it seems like an easy choice there. Like we have a local pro who's designed a couple of our courses here, um, Tillman park, which is great. And then I can't remember what they're officially calling it. Um, but it is at the seminary here in town and it is going to be an 1100 foot, uh, sorry, 11,000 foot. Is it 10 or 11,000 foot? Um, uh, championship level course. They have one hole that is 1100 feet long. It is a par five. And the first time I played it, I got a birdie. I was so excited, but I had two really, really good shots. And then my, and, and my upshot was not great, but I hit an edge of circle putt. So, you know, I was like, all right, cool. Um, but it's, um, I'm trying to think here, losing my train of thought, losing my train of thought. Uh, it's fun because it's 800 feet and then a dog leg, 90 degree hard, right. With a Mando at the end of that, because, there's a whole row of pine trees that you could cut the corner. I mean, there's no one who's really strong enough or good enough currently in our club um, that could do that. But, you know, championship level course, the goal is to have maybe a silver series or something like that. I don't know now with the way the standards are changing, who knows? I I don't know what those are anymore, but um, uh, you know, so you have to go all the way to the end because on the other side of those big tall pine trees is a retirement community. (laughs) And honestly, like the way that this course is set up, it would hold a lot of spectators on most of the holes. Uh, There's a couple in the woods where it would get tight and it would look good on camera, provided they had on two of the holes, 
that are close enough to the road where um, if there's not enough leaves, enough foliage, then you um, you'd be able to see some cars. But if they just you know position the cameras so they don't face that way, it would look really really good. Um, uh, email sometimes if you have time. I have questions on podcasts because I want to do one. Podcasts are super fun. Um, as a quick little thing, um, I use anchor.fm. It's free. They host it. And once you get, they just changed the rules. Once you get, uh, 50 people listening to your podcast, um, you can run uh, host red ads, which there's only one. And that's the one like I got in before that was a rule. So I'm grandfathered in. I don't have 50 subscribers yet on the podcast, which it is what it is. Um, it, uh, do, 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 do. Um, but it's basically just advertising anchor and click through rate as a standard rate. So um, per thousand listens, you get $10. And I finally cracked a thousand listens. So, woo! <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, it also, just like YouTube, don't expect to make a lot of money very fast. Um, honestly, don't expect to make money because it won't go well. Um, if you're in it for the money, it's not going to go well. And find a topic you really love, whether that is disc golf, photography, underwater basket weaving, whatever your choice is. You know, we all have our own hobbies. Um, I prefer competitive underwater basket weaving because they have to hold their breath. I'm just making crap up right now. Um, it's a ton of fun though. Um, uh, yeah, but Texas States was really entertaining to watch. Music City Open is happening this weekend. Um, when this podcast goes live on April 1st, it will be happening. Uh, but nothing's live except for the final round on Sunday. It's all going to be post-produced, um, which is covered by Central Coast and Gatekeeper, or is it Gatekeeper and GK? Either way, it's all published on the Disc Golf Pro Tour's YouTube page, so it doesn't matter. Uh, YouTube.com slash Disc Golf Pro Tour. The, uh, again, rounds one and two, Friday, Saturday, nothing live. It's a sad day. No live disc golf. But, you can catch it live on Sunday. Uh, that will start at 1030 Eastern, 930 Central. Pretty early for you people there on the West Coast. I'm sorry, um, but that is what it is. Uh, MPO feature card for round one. I'm guessing, just going to throw this out there, that uh, Dynamic Discs is a sponsor for this one because your feature card is Zach Melton, Chris Dickerson, Chris Clemens, and Nicholas Antila. I hope I said that right working on my finish uh duolingo i i highly recommend looking into that your fpo feature card is ella hansen hannah blumroos macy valadiaz and missy gannon macy valadiaz is someone that i stumbled across last year at the dynamic discs open and she's really fun to watch she's really good um she's she's a rising star there for sure uh and i'm hoping I don't know if Kona's playing in this, but she finished 10th at Texas States. I'm hoping she's out of the woods, so to speak, with her play. I, I don't want to rag on her. It's just given her contract and what she's paid, you know, got to be hoping that she picks it up soon. Um, now, they definitely signed her knowing that she was not going to be a number one. It was, I'd say, 50-50 between being definitely a solid top 10, probably top five contender, uh, and her social media. So we'll see where that ends up. Um, Ricky dropped out. Uh, I don't think Paul's going to be there. A lot of people aren't going to be there. Um, my podcast link is not in the description question mark. I don't know. I don't think I can look that up right now. I cannot. Um, it is anchor.fm slash Joe's Disc Golf. Uh, it should be a link. Uh, I think I have a link tree in there. Um, and you'll be able to do that. You can also email me, joe at joesdiscgolf.com. I don't mind giving that one out. That's fine. Nobody emails me. It's very lonely. 
<laughs> I'm just kidding. Oh man, this is a good. This is a good episode. This is this is a lot of fun when there's actually people here to talk to. Uh, there's also if you like listening to me for some reason, you'll probably like listening to uh, myself, uh, Ben and RJ as we host Half in the Bag Disc Golf, a disc golf podcast where we just talk about whatever's going on. Uh, last week went super long. We did the other half of half in the bag. We talk about skip ace, which I am. If you listen to me, pick skip ace people. Don't pick them. <laughs> that's, that's where I'm at right now. Don't pick them. Uh, if I pick you, if I predict someone to win the whatever tournament, I'm sorry. I picked Katrina to win. It didn't happen. It was a safe bet, so I thought. Or no, I picked Kristen Tatar to win. Or no, Katrina, Kristen, and then um, Valerie Mondahano. And I was real close. I got two, two, and four. Four doesn't get me anything. You know, and two is the first place loser. Uh, I'm just kidding. Uh, I, I would love to get second. Uh, those guys, those gals, everybody, they're awesome. But um, I think that just about does it. Uh, this has been... This is crazy. I've got four likes, anywhere between four and six concurrent viewers, depending on YouTube, what I'm actually looking at here. I, I am looking at, it says concurrent viewers, six, convert, concurrent viewers under the live part as five. Now, it was four. I don't, I don't understand. I, I don't get it and Facebook, give me a big fat goose egg. Love you, Facebook, I think. Oh, wait, I didn't actually have the chat pulled up. Where's chat? Who the hell's chat in this? Facebook, fix your stuff. I say that to YouTube, too. Fix your stuff. Look at what Twitch does, and just control C, control V, copy and paste. You know, legally different, though. Like, YouTube's isn't bad. Facebook's is bad. <laughs> this is only the second time I'm streaming on here. Um, and yeah, but I think that about wraps it up. So uh, thank you all for talking. Uh, the disc golf photography guy, Hugh and Andrew, thank you all for talking. It has been great. It has been fun answering questions, giving opinions and just having fun and just talking. Um, I do have to give a shout out to Sweetwater in Fort Wayne, Indiana for letting me use the Earthworks Icon USB. It is an absolutely fantastic microphone. It is also very expensive and worth way more than my last two microphones combined. Uh, if you're looking to get into podcasting, uh, the Yeti, um, or not the Yeti, uh, the Blue Snowball is a surprisingly good value for about 60 bucks. Um, so, Thank you all for watching. Um, as always, I've been Joe. You've been awesome. And if you get a tree kick back into the fairway, don't forget to thank Treesus. And if you get kicked further into the woods, well, then you must repent and reflect because you have transgressed against Treesus. And you must atone for your sins. So thank you all for watching. Can't wait to see you all in the next video. Can't wait to talk to you all in the next podcast and the next live stream, which is Thursdays at 8.30 p.m. Have a great evening. Have a great weekend. I'm not going to get out to disc golf because it's supposed to snow, even though it was 80 degrees, 70 degrees yesterday. So have a great day, everybody.